No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, Boris Johnson's bombshell defence dossier is in the hands of the Partygate plotters trying to finish off his political career. But will his critical new evidence be enough to exonerate him in this despicable kangaroo court? That's tonight's big debate with my superstar panel. Tonight, I'm joined by Carol Malone, Benjamin Butterworth and Belinda De Lucy. Then in The Clash, I'll ask a lineup of top political experts, including Tory Grandees, Edwina Curry and David Malloran, Boris supporting barrister Stephen Barrett, if they agree that there's a Westminster witch hunt against the former PM. Also coming up after returning from Rwanda with GB News to double down on her deportation plan, Superwoman Suala has taken aim at Labour's left-wing snobbery. Only uh, people who have failed here is the Labour Party and opposition MPs who have failed to stand up for the British people. So has the rabid left, including the likes of Steve Bray and James O'Brien hit a new low with snobby attacks on the Home Secretary and her plan. We'll get stuck into that in the media buzz. As the DUP announces it will vote against the government's Northern Ireland protocol plans, is Rishi Sunak obliterating Boris's Brexit legacy? Reform Party's leader Richard Tice joins me live to explain why he believes the Stormont break is a con. Plus, why are Harry and Meghan supporting an extreme woke group that promotes crazy gender ideology in schools and accuses parents of gendering unborn children? This is mad stuff. Uh, I've got Lawrence Fox investigating. That's in the Fox report later this hour. Elsewhere on the show, as a new UN report claims that the deranged march to net zero needs to be accelerated by a decade because humanity is on thin ice is it time to just start ignoring the hysterical predictions of climate doom mongers? Neil Oliver offers the common sense perspective you won't find on the MSM. He's live with me shortly. And as the SNP descends into civil war and a membership scandal exposes mass defections from the party, scheming sturgeon becomes stumbling sturgeon. 30,000 down from 100,000 sure. is a third. No, no, it's true, but we were asked to specifically... We, we may I'll explain why Sturgeon has done more than any other recent leader in modern history to save the union. That's in a special digest next. And as donations continue to plummet, did David Lammy's white saviour attacks on comic relief destroy the BBC charity? Colonial image, a white, beautiful heroine holding a black child with no agency, no parents in sight, Good one, Lammy. Calvin McKenzie is going to unleash on him later in Uncancer. We'll have a first look tomorrow's newspaper front pages, of course. And a new Greatest Britain Union jackass to This is Dan Wooten tonight. Let's go. The SNP is falling, folks. My take on a horror weekend for Scheming Sturgeon in just a moment. First, though, the news headlines with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you, and good evening to you. The top story tonight on GB News. The DUP in Northern Ireland says it's going to vote against the government in this week's first parliamentary vote on the new Brexit deal. The Prime Minister agreed the new Windsor framework, as it's known, with the EU last month. And it aimed to resolve some of the concerns unionists have about the Northern Ireland Protocol. Meanwhile, here at home, Suella Braverman has told MPs she is satisfied the provisions of the government's illegal migration bill are capable of being applied compatibly with the Human Rights Convention. It comes after Suella Braverman said migrants could be sent to Rwanda by as early as this summer. The agreement between the two countries has been expanded to include all illegal migrants and not just asylum seekers. Speaking in the House of Commons, Suella Bravman told MPs today that the UK will work more with France to secure cross-channel cooperation. And then she criticised Labour for announcing their immigration policy on Twitter. Shadow Home Secretary's been on Twitter. She's very good on Twitter. She tweeted in the last 10 days, Labour's paltry excuse for a plan. Half of it's stuff we're already doing. The other half is their plan for open borders and unlimited migration. What I suggest they do is get off Twitter, get to Rwanda, and I'll show them how to stop the boats. 
Strike News and members of the RMT union in Network Rail have voted to accept an offer covering pay, jobs and conditions. Staff will receive a pay rise of between 9.2 and 14.4 per cent and increased back pay. The union says its 20,000 members voted 76 per cent in favour of the new deal. Now, in the United States, local, state and federal security agencies are preparing for the possible arrest of the former president, Donald Trump. Security fences are being erected around Manhattan Criminal Court right now as a precautionary measure. The district attorney presented evidence to a New York grand jury related to allegations that a Trump associate had paid $130,000 in hush money to a porn actress during the final days of the 2016 presidential campaign. And finally, Sir David Attenborough has planted a tree in honour of the late Queen and to officially open a new Platinum Jubilee woodland in Richmond Park in London. Mr Attenborough had selected oak for the occasion and he described the late Queen Elizabeth II as a great lover of trees and very fond of the Royal Parks. The Plant a Trees Jubilee project has been seen more than a million new trees planted in honour of the late Queen. I'm back in an hour, now back to Dan. Something extraordinary has been happening in Scottish politics over the weekend with the significance of the brewing civil war missed actually by most south of the border, especially scheming Sturgeon fanatics in the MSM who continue to cover her leadership like a personality cult. But there's no way to sugarcoat the near total collapse of her SNP party with Scottish separatism now a distant fantasy. Sturgeon has failed. The nationalists have fallen. The union has been saved. With just one week left until Queen Nick's replacement as leader of the SNP is crowned, her legacy is assured to be more William Wallace than Robert the Bruce. She leaves behind a party fractured by skullduggery over their membership numbers, their woke joke gender recognition bill and a police probe into £600,000 of missing donations which Sturgeon's husband, Peter Morrell, is being urged to explain after his sudden resignation as party CEO. After two decades where Sturgeon and Murrell had an iron grip on Scottish politics, the dominoes are falling. And who knows what more is going to emerge. Watch how scheming Sturgeon was reduced to stumbling Sturgeon this afternoon, as she was quizzed about her mess after choosing to face... Oh, she must have gone to some really tough journalists, right? I assume someone who's going to give you really tough, tough questions. Yes, yes. Oh, no. No, no, no. Actually, she went on Loose Woman. SNP's not in a mess. It's going through, how can I put this, some growing pains. The membership, yes, we've gone down from a very, very high point of, of membership, but we are still... Well, 30,000 down from 100,000 sure. is a third. No, no, t it's true. But... Wasn't it the fact that th the media chief, he stood aside because he said he was told to say, this is rubbish, we haven't lost 30,000 members. We were asked to... Uh, yeah. we, we mishandled that situation. Do you think another reason that you decided now the time mm -hmm. was right was the furore over the gender recognition no. bill? So, as you can see, the incessant spin has caught up with the arch manipulator, with even the SNP's new chief executive, Michael Russell, admitting the party finds itself in a, quote, tremendous mess. Now, this is all good news, uh, by the way, and we don't celebrate good news enough. Sturgeon and the SNP now stand as the biggest political example of the mantra, go woke, go broke. I mean, this is a politician um, who had actually become so cocky and so arrogant with her husband running the party that she believed her members and the public no longer mattered when it came to sending male rapists to women's prisons and pushing through her dangerous and divisive gender recognition reform bill. Uh, the public said, 
enough was enough. And so did the party. This is the critical thing. The party, the SNP, lost more than a third of its membership, with nearly 30,000 paid-up supporters quitting, leaving just 72,000 to vote on the next leader. Now, Murrell seemed to want to cover that up to protect the legacy of his failing wife. And Sturgeon was still trying to deny it, as you just saw today. But no wonder, no wonder she's trying to deny it, because she leaves office a failure. The rest of the media won't tell you this, but Sturgeon has been a massive failure for Scotland. Scottish drug debts remain at a European high. The Scotland NHS and ambulance service are in a dire state. The education successes that she begged to be judged on when she took the job never materialised. Her chosen successor, Humza Yousaf, is, well, utterly useless. And her dream of separatism is a mirage, a fantasy, a pipe dream. So do you know what? I'm going to do something I never thought I would do. Tonight, I actually want to thank Scheming Sturgeon. Thank you, Queen Nick. You have done more to preserve our great United Kingdom than virtually any other leader in recent history. But to respond now, my superstar panel, uh, the Daily Express star columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper Benjamin Butterworth and the former Brexit Party MEP Belinda de Lucy. Carol Malone, something seismic happened in Scotland over the weekend. Why is the MSM not talking about it? It, it, it is astonishing, you know, that a woman like Sturgeon, the woman who, who could never in a... Are you, do you want me to talk about Mara or do you want me to talk about her? Talk about both. Well, let me talk because about... Because the thing is, this is the power her, couple. I want to take on about the, the go work, go broke thing. Uh, this is a woman who never in a million years could be described mm. as woke. When, when she first came to power as First Minister eight years ago, her, her supporters, her followers, were decent, ordinary mm -hmm. folk who could never have believed in a million years that within a few short years she'd be talking about women with penises. And, and you know, they have been shocked at their core by this. And, and you know, we never had her down as this post-modernist wokey, but that's... So, and I still don't understand why she was pushing that policy. As you said in your, your intro there, you know, she was advised by the party not to go down this route because it, long before the gender reform bill came to fruition, every poll said two and one Scots did not support it. And as she has always done, she has ignored the majority of the Scottish people and gone for the minority that she supports and, and, and the areas that she supports. But... At the weekend, the plot thickened because at the time she resigned, I was thinking, this is not about her mm. wanting more what time else is with going her on? niece and her nephew. Well, we found out what was going on. So Peter Morell, her husband, um, who was chief executive of the party, he was told he had to resign or he'd be fired. He, re he actually resigned yesterday, three minutes before he was about to be sacked. And that's because they're looking into this 600 grand that has, that has, that, uh, has gone missing that was for the second Indy ref. Also, he loaned 100 seven grand from his own personal account to the SNP and did not declare it when he should have done that. And of that. course he denies wrongdoing. He and denies there is wrongdoing. No findings in yet. But Sturgeon has been asked the question many times. She shares a joint bank account with her husband, mm -hmm. and she has been asked many times if the money that 107 grand came from the mm -hmm. joint bank account. She will not say mm -hmm. yeah. whether it did or whether it didn't. And, and now you've got 30,000 missing members too, Carol. You've got that, but you've also got the police looking and, 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 and taking statements from witnesses. They started taking statements mm -hmm. a week before she resigned. So people can come to whatever conclusion they want on that, but it, it, it is her resignation is starting to make more sense to me. And apart from all of that, she never shifted the argument on Indy Ref. From the minute she took over, the, 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 the dial moved a couple of percent here and there, but, you know, of late, it has been no. to stay in the union. Exactly. No, no fundamental change there. Yes. But Benjamin Butterworth, isn't scheming Sturgeon actually now the ultimate example of go woke, go broke? Because as soon as the SNP started to pursue this extreme gender ideology, the membership just quit 10,000 alone this year, Benjamin. And those members, by the way, they are the people who sustain the party. They are the lifeblood of the party. They pay for the party. They campaign for the party. And that's why Sturgeon had to go, because she lost them, because she had gone woke. Well, how ironic to hear a Liz Truss supporter complaining about not having many party members when they're having a leadership election. That's pretty the rich. The party members supported Liz Truss, That's Benjamin. Pretty rich. Go back and check the facts, actually. Pretty rich. They supported Liz Truss. That's a separate argument.
the party members to to back to Liz Truss. Well, the idea that she has gone broke, go woke or go broke makes no sense because, you know, look, I wouldn't vote SNP, I, I suspect, but the SNP under Nicola Sturgeon has won more elections by a bigger margin than any other politician since Tony Blair. So if your argument is that you go woke and go broke, well, the most successful politicians are Blair and Sturgeon in recent times at the did. ballot box. But and you talk about... But we're talking about in recent months. We're talking about since January. You talk uh, about... So, so, so because, because what happened, for folk who don't know, what happened is that uh, the SNP, and I'm going to use this word, actually, and I'm very happy to do it, they lied about their membership numbers. They lied yeah. to journalists. They said to journalists, it was the Mail on Sunday, uh, they said, we have close to our last publicly announced membership figure. That figure was 102,000, Benjamin. Do you know how many they have? 72,000. So if you can't see that there is a direct link between 30% of the party's membership leaving and the extreme woke policies... But hang pushed, on. Then I think you're being intellectually dishonest if I'm going to be completely frank with you. Well, I mean, you know, Desperate Dan's diatribe gets worse every week by the looks of it. You're missing out the massive part of this jigsaw, aren't you? How mysterious that it wasn't just the gender debate. Actually, the big debate that was going on among the SNP leadership and the SNP membership was about whether the next elections for Holyrood should be a de facto referendum on their policy for independence, and that if most Scots yeah. voted SNP, yeah, she was that, failing that, on that would mean they, they would have to be a referendum. But, but you, so don't think, on, you don't that think 10,000 party the members... He. No, 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 you don't think that 10,000 members defecting since the start of the year was over the gender recognition reform bill? No, I don't. Oh, and you know what? There has Belinda, been... come on. Belinda, come on. Yes. There, been, there has been no policy more consulted on in the history of Holyrood. Yeah. They put uh, it in their manifesto at both Holyrood and Westminster. Yeah, but we're talking elections. about the party members. members. And the Scottish but public... But we're talking about the party The Scottish members. public voted for the SNP with that in their manifesto repeatedly. The Scottish public repeatedly. polled time and time again vote, didn't want the gender reform bill. Are you rejecting well, the okay, let, let Belinda come in here. Let Belinda <laughs> Lucy come in here. <laughs> I just think this is so delicious. Uh, I really enjoy the woke eating the woke. They always... Had, I mean, they don't even need enemies, do they? Because they're enemies unto themselves. They bring themselves down every single yeah. time. And it's when you follow lies, you follow preaching, mm. um, it's, you're just going to end up, you know, spearing well, yourself. when you deny biology, when you well, deny science. So, for example, we've got Humza Yousaf, and this, this is the this funniest is thing. So, <laughs> He is the instigator of the SNP hate crime bill about misgendering. And he was reported as having committed a hate crime um, against um, Isla Bryson for, for calling uh, into question the fact whether he was a trans woman or not. And this is his own bill that luckily Adam for him, Graham is what I call that Adam, yes, yes, bloke, show. The, the yeah. rapist, yeah. Um, and, of course, this was his bill that would have caught him out had it actually been made law. And he would have done his... He would have ended up freaking being, you know, Labelled by the police as a criminal by his, mm. they eat themselves. It's mm. called woke cannibalism, and it's absolutely delicious. But it's, but woke this cannibalism. This guy. This, yeah. this guy. This guy. You this said no. <laughs> yeah, this this before important. we move off, you said, listen. He is also now pushing the gender reform bill. I mean, how stupid do you have to be? It's, it's already lost Sturgeon her job, and now he's pushing. It. And this is the guy that Murrell wanted in place. This is what the party, oh, yeah, yeah. the, the machine par wanted. The parallel wanted universe it. in which you all live, in which the SNP, it's which is one election after election versus Belinda de Lucy today announced of reform, a party that can't even keep its deposit in elections, for God's oh, sake. Oh, Benjamin, oh, I know you you're so slightly bitter. threatened by the fact there's more choice for... I'm not threatened, right. Belinda. You, can, you can't even get 5% of the vote. Oh, I knew it must mean... This is, this is great. I love that you brought it up. Thank you very much, Benjamin. You must be getting worried. I'm enjoying this. The fact of the matter is that Scotland used to be defined by its inventors, its explorers, its scientists. Yeah. They invented penicillin, the MRI, the steam engine... What's and that got to do with the price of fish? Nicola Sturgeon defined Scotland through her, her anglophobic policies Indeed. as completely anti-Westminster. And just to explain, Benjamin is referring to the fact that Belinda de Lucy, who is a former Brexit Party MEP, uh, rejoined the Reform Party today alongside ten other former Brexit Party MEPs, including Anne Widdicombe, and the Reform Party leader, Richard Tice, will be here in the next hour. It's obviously so got him rattled. Yeah. You, you call it reform, <laughs> I call it regurgitation. Well, so yes. 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 Thank, Thank you so much. And they were with me all night. But coming up, are Harry and Meghan wrong to back a woke campaign group that promotes extreme gender ideology in schools. This is really nuts stuff, uh, by the way. They don't 
uh, want uh, boys to be called boys. They don't want parents to uh, embrace the gender of their unborn baby. Lawrence Fox has been investigating. He's got lots to say shortly. But up next in The Clash, is there a Westminster witch hunt against Boris Johnson barrister Stephen Barrett, former health minister Edwina Curry, former chief secretary to the Treasury David Muller and ex-director of communications for Number 10? Big names in the Tory party. All Jonathan Haslam are going to debate this straight after the break. Well, what do you think? Dan at GBNews.UK, at GBNews on Twitter. Our Boris poll running there right now. The results after the break. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go, and it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even some ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit off. Well, you are. You, that's my you, ringtone. You, no. My political ambitions are, <laughs> those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing, go on. He's probably gonna want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes to have <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubry, weekday evenings at six o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers. Tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. I'll spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway. Headliners every night from 11 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. And no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Neil Oliver and Lawrence Fox both on the way, but it's time now for The Clash. And earlier today, Boris Johnson handed over his bombshell 60-page defence dossier to the Privileges Committee ahead of Wednesday's televised question into whether he misled Parliament during Partygate. Now, allies of the former PM believe the dossier, which is expected to be made public tomorrow, will exonerate Bojo of any wrongdoing. Meanwhile, several senior Tories have warned that the investigation has descended into a witch hunt, including Lord Greenhull speaking to Times Radio yesterday.
concerned that it will be a witch hunt and a concern to read in papers that obviously are being briefed by everybody left, front, centre, uh, of concern that uh, we're going to get a McCarthyite approach uh, to, um, to justice on the Privileges Committee. Well, I believe we are, as I've been saying for many months, I believe there is a Westminster witch hunt against Boris Johnson. But do you agree? Email me, dan at gbnews.uk. Vote in our poll at GB News on Twitter. Those results coming up shortly. But to help you make up your mind, I'm joined by top Tory barrister Stephen Barrett, the former Conservative Health Minister Edwina Curry, former Chief Secretary to the Treasury David Maller, and former Number 10 Director of Communications under John Major Jonathan Haslam. So, Stephen, I want to come to you first because you have been doing some fascinating must read essential analysis and work on the Privileges Committee over the past few months. And your verdict about its uh, legal legitimacy is damning. T tell me what you've discovered, Stephen. Well, thank you for that. And yes, and I must correct you because I'm not appearing here as a Conservative and I'm not appearing here as a supporter of Mr Johnson or any other politician. What I am doing is explaining to the public, largely on the work done by Lord Panic, who has done two legal opinions for the committee, what error the committee has fallen into. And it is a particularly dark and particularly concerning error. The committee has decided to stand outside the rule of law and to mm -hmm. abandon justice. It is acting in a wholly disreputable way. That will apply whichever politician is ever called before it. And that is something that the public need to know. It's almost bigger than, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, isn't it, in, 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 in politics, but it's almost bigger than Boris. <laughs> because it, it, it will repeat itself time yeah. after time after time. <clears throat> and once you unleash a show trial, then there is no putting the genie back in the mm. bottle. And, and Stephen, can you just can, can you just can we just dig down into that a little bit, Stephen? Because that is because they have now taken away uh, this idea that it doesn't matter whether Boris was intending to mislead Parliament or not. Yes, and I'm really grateful that people have grasped with that issue because that's one of the key ones. Redefining the event, the, the offence after the event. Is, is inherently unjust. That is completely morally wrong. If we had an offence, uh, 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 you just can't do that. You cannot change the law after the event. The 1997 resolution is binding on this committee. Erskine May is binding on this committee. And all this committee has done is jazz hands. And that is, that is ridiculous. That is absurd. They have denied him access to proper legal counsel. They've denied his legal counsel the ability to ask questions. They've denied him any real access to, to what they're going to, to the information and the charge that they are putting before him. Even this evening, we've seen the total absurdity that they are going to edit his defence. No court would edit a defendant's defence. That, that's simply ridiculous. Mm. The, the president of this court, the, 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 the chair of this committee, has already declared him guilty. What mm. on earth no, she is has. the farcical thing? And, and you're Wednesday? referring, of course, there to Harriet Harman, who, who tweeted before uh, she was she was taking on this role that, that she believed that Boris had lied. So, Edwina Curry, Stephen Barrett says they're inherently unjust, morally wrong... Do you think this is a witch hunt, Edwina? Uh, well, that would make Boris a wizard. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what he turns out to be on this occasion. Uh, look, we've got three different kinds of court we're being talking about here. One is you've got criminal court, where it has to be beyond reasonable doubt. And you're innocent until proven guilty. And then you have the civil court, where it's a balance of probabilities. And then you have the Privileges Committee and many other select committees who do this sort of thing in the Commons, and that's a moralistic pantomime. And I've had to appear before one of them, not the Privileges Committee, but you know that the view on whether you are guilty of whatever they're accusing of has already been decided. Mm. The only real question is, what are they going to do about it? Plus, what kind of theatre is it going to be? Uh, Boris, it sounds like, is going to bluff it all out. He's got these thousands of pages of evidence in his favour. Uh, we're all going to spend all day Wednesday watching it. Um, I think we should provide ourselves with a glass of Prosecco while we do it, because it's going to take a long time.
Yeah, maybe a few uh, vodka and Diet Cokes. Uh, although I won't be doing that, of course, because I will be working hard. Uh, D David Mellor, look, I know that you don't believe the committee is a witch hunt. However, how do you feel about the fact that the evidence from Sue Gray, the Sue Gray report, is being treated as sacrosanct? And this is now the woman who will not say how long she has been in negotiations with the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, to become the Labour Party chief of staff. Why on earth should we trust any of the evidence from Sue Gray now? Well, I don't think we should. I don't think we should. Look, uh, it's a fairly narrow point, actually, and I can't... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hysteriaed out, and I cannot get hysterical about this. The reality is <laughs> that Boris is, um, is being hauled over the coals for, it is asserted, uh, having told an untruth or a series of untruths to, the, uh, uh, to his colleagues in Parliament. And uh, did he or didn't he? I mean, he's not exactly free from lawyers. Lord Panic, wonderful name that, isn't it? Panic. Don't panic. Panic's here. Panic is a, one of the most expensive briefs around. He is acting for Boris. We'll see. But Boris cannot be surprised that he's being called to account, because that's what these committees are there to do. If Boris has lied, told untruths, terminological inexactitudes, as we used to have to call them, uh, then, you know, he will get what he deserves. I suspect it'll be somewhere in the muddled middle. And, you know, oh, I can't get excited about this. I'm sorry. But Jonathan Haslam, surely it's not up to a privileges committee uh, stacked against Boris Johnson to decide whether the bloke who was elected at the last election in a landslide continues to sit as an MP. And that is the potential consequence of this inquiry, is it not? No, it's not, Dan. Far from it. The committee is one stage in a process. The committee will examine all the evidence. They are not, as your other lawyer was uh, pretending, editing what Boris Johnson said. My understanding is that they will redact names which are being put in there and they need to be protected. So what you have got then is a committee which will examine the evidence. Uh, the evidence that we are promised, this great dossier so far, if the best endeavours you've got are the two WhatsApp messages from Jack Doyle saying to the Prime Minister, you're OK, that looks pretty flimsy. Now, let me come back to the main point. The committee is a stage in the process. They examine the evidence. They will publish the evidence. We will see on TV how Boris Johnson responds to it. And then the committee will decide on that evidence and put a report to the House of Commons. And thereafter, the House of Commons, 650 parliamentarians, will be able to examine it themselves, to debate it. And if there is to be a sanction, they will decide upon it. So it is a stage in a process. This isn't a witch hunt. This is a, an opportunity to find out whether our elected prime minister has told truth or untruth. And that is a good process. And it's extremely important that it's followed through to its conclusion. But it's not the committee that makes the ultimate decision. It's the House of Commons. And whatever Lord Panic says, and his assertions have been uh, roundly dismissed in the past about the legality or otherwise of what's going on, the House of Commons will decide ultimately on the balance of advantage, on the balance of probabilities, on the evidence that they see in an unwhipped form, whether or not they should have sanctioned Boris Johnson. And that's a good process. Stephen Barrett, do you want to respond to that? Uh, I think it's very important that the press and the public don't associate our independent courts too closely with this process. It is what it is. The public should judge it for what it is. The idea that these mealy-mouthed words actually mean anything is clearly absurd. Lord Panic was Boris Johnson's biggest enemy in Miller II. He convinced the Supreme Court to say that Boris Johnson prorogued Parliament. The idea that one of our greatest lawyers should be traduced by, frankly, for, for political reasons, and that justice and the rule of law should be just ground into the dust because we don't like Boris. Well, fine. If you do that, it will have consequences. I want the public to oh, know on, we, the lawyers in the courts, have got nothing to do with it. Because you're just not getting there. Lord Panic's heart, yeah, he's a man for hire. He'll go and support any case that's going to pay his wages. That's the way it works. Uh, what exactly. I've said is that the House of Commons is the ultimate arbiter. They will judge the evidence. The committee will make a recommendation. We will all hear okay. the evidence, Adwina? the rebuttal, and you need to get on with it yeah. and accept that that's yeah. the way it is. Um, John, 
Jonathan is being a little uh, disingenuous for all sorts of good reasons. The House of Commons is not composed of a load of uh, judges. Uh, the House of Commons is composed of a load of politicians, and they will make their judgment and they will have their vote on the basis of politics, believe me. Uh, and I understand that, at least on the Conservative side, it's quite likely to be a free vote. Now, if Boris is actually sanctioned by this committee uh, to the, uh, be suspended for 10 days or more, and if the Commons uh, actually agrees with that, and it's at least possible that that might happen, uh, then... Uh, the next stage could be an automatic by-election. It needs a number of collection of signatures. In indeed, only 10,000, though. And he'll get that because Labour will put everything into that. No, indeed, I'm with you, and that is but very the, important the to point. The electorate, Dan, then in Henley, will have its decision to take. And they, mm. if they don't agree with the way Boris Johnson has provided, they can get rid of him. If they do agree that the House of Commons has got it wrong, the committee's got it wrong, everybody else has got it wrong, the right okay. way is that the electorate decides, and I'm sure David and Edwina would agree on that. OK, fascinating it's today. It's just a process. Final word, David Mallard. The question David is Mallard, the electorate decides the we'll general off. election along with everybody right, um, else uh, when they're electing... Um, I might okay, Edwina, in here Edwina, Edwina, just give David Mallard the final word, please. I, I don't think that this is anything other than a process. There are some people who just cannot stand anybody being critical of Boris, despite Boris's desperation. Uh, to make people critical of him on fundamental points like integrity and honesty. The reality is that Boris is being called to account for some of the things he said, which it is asserted by others, was not uh, accurate and was so inaccurate as to amount to deceit. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know what the outcome will be. Uh, I, normally on these parliamentary bloodlettings, you think well, at least they're going to be mildly amusing. This one isn't remotely amusing, no. it's just tedious. Most people will be glad when it's over. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. That I agree with you on, David Maller, uh, Tory party grandee, alongside the barrister Stephen Barrett, former Conservative Health Minister Edwina Curry, and the former number 10 Director of Communications Jonathan Haslam. Absolutely fascinating discussion. Who do you agree with? Is there a Westminster witch hunt against Boris Johnson? I say yes. So does Stephen on Twitter, who writes 100%. Starmer and Labour knew they wouldn't win with Boris in charge, so they needed him gone. He was the biggest obstacle to the left. Mary writes, no hunt, just holding the untrustworthy, pathological liar to account. And from Steve, you bet your boot series, led by the witch finder general Harriet Harman, who's already decided his guilt. 20 years ago today, Blair and co committed much bigger sins and were not held accountable. Steve, of course, referring to the anniversary of the start of the Iraq war there. And your verdict is now in. 75% of you agree with me that Boris Johnson is the victim of a witch Westminster witch hunt. 25% of you say he is not. Coming up, as a new UN report on climate change warns humanity is on thin ice, why are global authorities spreading hysterical green propaganda? Our very own Neil Oliver joins me on that shortly, but next, as it's revealed, the Sussexes are backing a children's initiative that says gender is not tied to sex organs. Should they really be backing uh, this extreme gender ideology? Lawrence Fox is investigating in the Fox report straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. It's all about family. Being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. 
We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Mondays to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain is watching. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. I campaigned in the largest democratic vote in our island story. I know this country has so much to be proud of. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. The wisdom of the nation is in its people. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. That's why I'm joining the People's Channel. Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Neil Oliver and Richard Tice on the way, but it's time now for the Fox Report with the actor turned political firebrand Lawrence Fox and the Duke of Duchess of Delusion are back in the headlines after it was revealed that their organisation Archwell is working in partnership with the Global Boyhood Initiative. Now, Harry and Meghan, uh, we know they're no strangers to throwing their weight behind social movements, but the controversy here comes from the extreme woke organisation's chilling views on the gender identity of school kids. So they state that families and schools are gender and heterosexuality factories and that gender is not tied to sex organs while encouraging primary school children to question gender norms. This alarming curriculum created by the pernicious pressure group is already being piloted in schools across London with hopes that it will soon be rolled out throughout the UK. So. Uh, Lawrence, I assume you're not surprised to see Harry and Meghan back in a woke pressure group that seems determined to go to war on boys. Well, no, not at all, because, you know, the richer someone is, usually, the, uh, the, the, the more they talk about equity and rigging the game, you know, which is essentially what this is. But what's so concerning in this report and, and what they're saying is, while the, family, while the family is a place of nurturing and support for many children, it can also be where gender and sexuality are regulated and policed, as many other interviewees and much research suggests. So essentially they're saying these spoilt little Sussexes with their horribly divided agenda. That's, they want the end of the family, Dan. And, um, you know, that's just absolutely a red line. It should be a red line for anybody in this country. I do wish they'd just stop speaking. Well, I do too. They're also complete hypocrites, Lawrence, because I went back and looked today, uh, given the support of this organisation, because, by the way, this organisation is slamming parents who celebrate their gender of unborn babies, you know? So if you say, oh, I'm so happy that I'm having a little baby girl or a little baby girl, if you have a, a gender reveal party or something, you're part of the problem, Lawrence. Well, that was interesting because I went back and checked. And do you remember uh, during the Oprah Winfrey interview in March 2021, Prince Harry announced to the world that he was having a girl uh, on the birth of Archie. Uh, they actually posted a blue picture and that's terrible for this organization of course because blue is a, a boy color uh, saying it's a boy so they don't believe it when it comes to their own family why are they trying to push it all on us and our kids 
Well, because they are the exact thing that they accuse you of. You know, they'll accuse the whole of Great Britain of being racist while being massively racist themselves. They'll accuse the royal family of being racist while being very racist themselves. They'll accuse, you know, they'll talk about equity, which is essentially rigging of the game, which I've said before. Um, and, you know, but they don't, they're, they're, they're not equitable. They live in a Montecito mansion worth tens of millions of dollars. It, it's it, it's just so crass and pathetic. And then, and we see what the side effects of this all, this is, which is the you know the tragedy of what's happening to Dylan Mulvaney and this sort of celebration of sexual deviance uh, in society. And us, you know, as as a result of equity, we've got to accept the fact that some people are just sexual deviants who want to pretend to be twelve year old girls. And and actually, I think it's probably time the people of this country just turned around and went, yeah, we don't do that here thanks very much that's not that's not what we're into and you go make another documentary chaps well indeed but one of the watch. i know but one of the most disturbing things lawrence is it was only this announcement which has actually got folk looking into the global boyhood initiative and realizing oh my goodness lawrence it's already infiltrating schools in our country. This pilot scheme is already running. And the thing about the Global Boyhood Initiative is that it sounds very respectable, doesn't it? It sounds as if it supports young boys, but in fact, it, it wants to completely dismantle anything connected to being a boy. Well, Dan, I got this email from my school today, from one of my son's schools today, diversity and inclusion. That's what they're into. It's everywhere. Every single parent in this country should be very, very worried about what is being washed into their children's brains. They are teaching this stuff everywhere. Your kid is not safe in school. You need to make sure, de debrief and unbrainwash your child when they get home from school because school is now indoctrination. It has nothing to do with education anymore. I, th I think you've just got, got a message from your child's teacher, Lawrence, telling you off, maybe. <laughs> but no, look... I, I couldn't agree more. I think, actually, Harry and Meghan have done us a bit of a favour by supporting this initiative because, actually, it's damaging. It's damaging. And it's fascinating, isn't it, that we're still not learning from the Tavistock Clinic. We're still not learning from the damage that we've done to folk like Carabelle. And, actually, we're massively starting to undermine gay and lesbian people in society too, Lawrence, because what this is all about <laughs> is telling young gay and lesbian boys and girls, no, 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 you're not a young gay guy who, who wants to uh, join the ballet class. You're not a tomboy who, who maybe will be attracted to women one day. You must be in the wrong body. You must transition. You must consider going on puberty blockers. And it's sick. And I'm so angry that Harry and Meghan are throwing their weight behind an organisation like this. It's so homophobic. The whole thing is so unutterably homophobic. We spent yeah, years, it is. decades creating equal rights for gay and lesbian people, as we should, because it's a hardware issue being gay and being straight. That is probably my son's teacher. It is, it's a hardware issue being gay and straight. But uh, trans is a software issue, as Douglas Murray's quite rightly said many, many times, you know, and it's like this, trans is an ideology, gay and straight, that's, that's, hard, that's hardwired into you. And we should not allow this homophobic, divisive, child mutilating movement run by these idiots harry and megan to, to take hold in the country because once it's in you've got to get it out indeed okay well look you, you go you go and deal with the teacher lawrence <laughs> we'll speak next week lawrence fox with the fox report thank you very much but still to come as suella braverman visits rwanda to double down on her immigration proposals have rabid lefties like lbc's james o'brien he's in new low with their vicious attacks on the home secretary tonight's superstar panel have their say just after 10 but First, our very own Neil Oliver joins me to ask if climate doom mongers are playing on our fears with a new UN report warning that humanity is on thin ice. That's right after this very short break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. 
First and foremost, I am a GB News fan and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, three till six. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. Three till six p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even some ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at seven o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panelists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from seven on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Neil Oliver is tonight's outsider. Uh, so move over COVID, the elites are back with another terror campaign to scare you witless. Oh, this time it's the end of civilization. A new climate change report from the UN today warns time is running out for humanity to avoid a dangerous global warming catastrophe. The update from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says we're a, quote, ticking time bomb skating on thin ice unless we stop burning fossil fuels. The UN is now calling on countries like the UK to, quote, fast forward the deranged march to net zero by 10 years to 2040 regardless of how cold or skint it leaves us. Now, for the record, the UK has already cut its greenhouse gases by more than 40% over recent decades, and we're responsible for less than 1% of global emissions. So, uh, Neil Oliver, when people like Greta Thunberg right, make similar doomsday claims, uh, like this now-deleted tweet from 2018, where she said, a top climate scientist is warning climate change will wipe out all of humanity unless we stop using fossil fuels over the next five years. Uh, Neil, given we're still here, still hearing the same rubbish from the UN, how are we expected to take any of this seriously? Well, we mustn't take any of it seriously, Dan. I think most importantly of all, we should notice where we're being nudged and more than anything else, perhaps, mm -hmm. we should notice the wider context. You know, look at what you've already been talking about tonight. Uh, the whole the whole party gate thing, you know, uh, whether, whether or not they had a cake or not was not the point. The point was that they weren't scared when they, they all colluded, Labour and Tory, to scare their constituents into yeah. obedience. That was the whole point. You've already talked about how the SNP is imploding. That's a significant political story. Uh, people are increasingly suspicious, it wasn't on your show tonight, but the, the, about the real motivations for the war in Ukraine that's immiserating millions of people in that country. It's all going on. You know, the, there's a great deal going on that people are rightly watching. And what happens, the IPCC gets pushed on stage yet again by the UN. They come clattering on stage to distract everybody 
from the real world issues. You know, this, this millenarian concept of the end of the world has been used to frighten people for hundreds, if not thousands of years. You've got to pay attention not to what's being said, but to when it's being said. That is the important, that is the important point. People are noticing all sorts. You know, the, the banks are getting shaky all over the world. You, people are worrying, worried about leaving their savings in the bank. People have cost of lockdown crisis to deal with. There's all sorts of stuff going on. And a floundering uh, establishment out there thinks, right, how do we get people looking the other way while we seek to, uh, you know, seek to deal or not deal with whatever it is we've got going on? Oh, yes, we'll tell them it's the end of the world. You know, the, the, the virus, uh, COVID, was invisible. What else can we threaten them with that they can't see or do anything about? I know, we'll bring back on climate change and tell them it's the oh, end of the uh, world. Oh, totally. You're so right, Neil. Uh, but, but why do you think the media just laps this up. I mean, tonight, for research purposes, before I tuned into Jubes & Co, I had a look at how the BBC News at 6, the ITV News at 6.30 uh, was covering this story. I mean, they might as well be the propaganda arm of the United Nations. It feels like they actually get off on trying to scare British people. Now, they're addicted to it, Neil. What's that about? <laughs> Journalism, uh, media, uh, it has an existential crisis going on. Uh, you and I have both been in the business of journalism for decades. It's not what it was. No, the motivations sure. behind journalism are not mm. what they once were. You know, that, that appetite for digging down, you know, finding the truth, getting up in people's faces, asking difficult questions, that's gone. The media, journalists in the main, are mouthpieces for vested interests. You know that is that is the real danger here, and we've got to we have got to pay attention to that. Uh, you, you know, ask you you ask the question. Uh, you know why journalists are doing it. They've always done it from the 1880s to the 1940s. There were there were stories about the the climate getting warmer. There was there was global warming then. You know, then up until the 1960s, uh, it, it, we were told it, it began to get colder. The 1960s and 70s, there were headlines about icebergs on the Thames, polar bears in London and all the rest of it. Now, in, in the 80s and 90s, Al Gore, St. Greta of, uh, Greta of Thunberg and the rest, pushing, uh, you know, the, the climate yeah. warming once yeah. again. The totally. Media have Greta Thunberg, turned who Greta deleted... No, they do. And Greta Thunberg, who deleted out her tweet, because guess what? Five years later, we're still here and we're still listening to the same rubbish from her and the United Nations. The, Neil Oliver, the world, thank you the so much. The world may end at some point, but it will not end because of uh, anthropogenic climate change. That is not the problem. Look mm -hmm. around everybody at everything else. That's the problem. Indeed. Neil Oliver back Saturday, 6 o'clock here on GB News. Brilliant stuff. But coming up, as the DUP says it will vote against the Stormont break on Wednesday, Reform UK leader Richard Tice is ready to tear into the Windsor framework. He's live in the studio. But next, following Suella Bravman's visit to Rwanda, tonight's superstar panel ask if loathsome lefties like Steve Bray and James O'Brien have hit a new low with their attacks on the Home Secretary and her vital immigration policy. We're back in just two minutes' time, so don't go anywhere.
It's 10 p.m. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, in what should be billed as the witch hunt on Wednesday, Boris Johnson has hit back at the Privileges Committee with his bombshell 60-page defence dossier. But will his critical new evidence be enough to exonerate him? And what's an appalling kangaroo court? That's the big debate with my superstar panel. And tonight, I'm joined by Carol Malone, Benjamin Butterworth and Belinda DeLucy. After returning from Rwanda, Superwoman Suella was back in the Commons and staying true to her pledge to stop the small boats. The only uh, people who have failed here is the Labour Party and opposition MPs who have failed to stand up for the British people. But has the rabid left become unhinged over this photo of her laughing with her Rwandan partners? Is the Home Secretary right that critics of her asylum policy are born out of left-wing snobbery? We're going to tackle that next in the Media Buzz. As the DUP confirms it will vote against the Stormont break, former Conservative Minister Anne Widdicombe agrees that the Northern Ireland Protocol is not up to scratch. I do believe in the union and leaving Northern Ireland in the EU while the rest of us come out was not what was promised. So with her and 11 other, four, well 10 other, sorry, Brexit Party MEPs rejoining Reform UK, the party's leader, Richard Tice, says that he has a plan to save the union. He's going to join me live in the studio very shortly on that. Plus, as donations continue to plummet, did David Lammy's white saviour attacks on comic relief destroy the BBC charity? colonial image, a white, beautiful heroine holding a black child with no agency, no parents in sight. Well done, Lammy. Uh, you've succeeded in the charity, raising tens of millions of pounds less this year. Calvin McKenzie uncancelled on that later this hour. Also coming up, she might be the queen of the US chat show, but Oprah needs to butt out of royal business. I think they should do what they feel is best for them and for their family. Don't miss my unflinching take on the sworn enemy of the royal family. And is Baroness Brady really the world's toughest interviewer? Thank you, Karen. It's uh, Baroness Brady. Baroness, to you. Baroness Brady. My friends call me Karen. More of those brilliant viral moments from The Apprentice when I crown tonight's greatest Britain and Union jackass. We'll have the first front pages arriving in mere moments too, right after Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you and good evening to you. The top story tonight on GB News. The DUP in Northern Ireland says it's going to vote against the government in this week's parliamentary vote on the new Brexit deal. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, agreed the new Windsor framework with the EU last month, which had aimed to resolve some of the concerns unionists had about the Northern Ireland Protocol. And also in the news today, the Home Secretary has told MPs she is satisfied the provisions of the government's illegal migration bill are capable of being applied compatibly with the Human Rights Convention. It comes after Suella Braverman said migrants could be sent to Rwanda as early as this summer. The agreement between the two countries has now been expanded to include all illegal migrants, not just asylum seekers. And speaking in the House of Commons earlier on today, Suella Braverman told MPs that the UK is going to work more with France to secure cross-channel cooperation. And she criticised Labour for announcing their immigration policy on social media. Shadow Home Secretary's been on Twitter. She's very good on Twitter. She <laughs> tweeted in the last 10 days Labour's paltry excuse for a plan. Half of it's stuff we're already doing. The other half is their plan for open borders and unlimited migration. What I suggest they do is get off Twitter, get to Rwanda, and I'll show them how to stop the boat. And two developments on strike news in the UK today. Members of the RMT, firstly, in Network Rail, have voted to accept an offer covering pay, jobs and conditions. Staff will receive a pay rise of between 9.2 and 14.4% and increased back pay as well. The union says its 20,000 members voted 76% in favour of the new deal. And NHS strikes in Scotland have been averted after the Royal College of Nursing and the GMB union, representing midwives and nurses, also voted to accept their pay offer by the Scottish Government. The offer for them is equivalent to an average 6.5% over the next two years. 
Turning our attentions now to the United States, where local, state and federal security agencies are preparing for the possible arrest of the former President Donald Trump. Security fences have been set up around the Man Manhattan Criminal Court as a precautionary measure. The district attorney presented evidence to a New York grand jury related to allegations that a Trump associate is said to have paid off $130,000 in hush money to a porn actress during the final days of the 2016 presidential campaign. And lastly, back here at home, Sir David Attenborough has planted a tree to honour the late Queen Elizabeth while officially opening a new Platinum Jubilee woodland in Richmond Park in London. Mr Attenborough selected a young oak tree for the occasion, describing Elizabeth II as a great lover of trees and very fond of the royal parks. The Plant a Tree Jubilee project has seen more than a million new trees planted in honour of the late Queen. You're up to date. I'm back in an hour. Now here's Dan. Tomorrow's news site now in our media bus. The first front pages are in, and uh, this is a story you're going to see uh, everywhere over the next few hours. The Metro carries the Baroness Casey reports damning verdict that the Met is institutionally misogynist, uh, homophobic and racist. The report commissioned after the murder of Sarah Everard says the UK's largest police force failed to protect the public or police women from sex abuser cops, with Casey including 16 recommendations to overhaul the police force to restore public trust. The Guardian also leads with that damning verdict. The Independent continues to and asks how many more rapists and killers remain in the Met. Very provocative question. Uh, but the Daily Star, as usual, uh, going with a different story. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to get back on the street, they report that those feathered scumbag seagulls are at it again, having attacked nearly half of the British population, raising the threat to our chips and ice cream. <laughs> My superstar panel, back with me now, Top Daily Express columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper, Benjamin Butterworth, and the former Brexit Party MEP, Belinda de Lucy. Now, an emboldened Suella Braverman has returned from her two-day trip to Rwanda, where she doubled down on her deportation plan and announced that constructive high-level talks had been held with European judges to lift their block on deportation flights to the country. And on her return to Parliament today, the Home Secretary reminded MPs and the country about the danger that would be posed by a Labour government as the party's MPs continue to oppose her bold solution to the boats crisis watch. Only... Uh, people who have failed here is the Labour Party and opposition MPs who have failed to stand up for the British people, failed to support our measures to stop the boats, and all they want is open borders and unlimited migration. But it wasn't just Labour MPs that Superwoman Suella had to put in their place. LBC loudmouth James O'Brien was caught out posting an edited photo of Braverman laughing at a construction site in the Rwandan capital of Kigali. After garnering 1.6 million views and whipping up hate online, he sheepishly deleted the tweet and replaced it with the original uncropped version of the photo in which the home sec is clearly flanked by a man and a woman. His typically tone-deaf caption still read exactly 200 years after William Wilberforce founded the anti-slavery society. Here's Sue Alan Braverman at a facility to which she hopes to, to deport traffic victims of modern slavery. And the woke mob riding on the coattails of Gary Lineker are now making deplorable Nazi comparisons the twisted norm. The infamous anti-Brexit campaigner Steve Bray, who spends his life harassing Tory MPs outside Parliament, took the left's unhinged rhetoric to an all-time low when he doctored the Braverman photo even further so it depicted the Home Secretary standing outside the Nazi death camp Auschwitz. Suella hit back at the onslaught from O'Brien and his disciples, calling them snobbish, before inviting the LBC loudmouth to visit the, quote, beautiful, welcoming country before so viciously deriding it. So, Carol, it feels to me that the rabid left have actually hit a new low. And mm. we've seen now, and this was always going to the impact, be the impact of the disgusting way that the BBC have made a martyr of Gary Lineker, mm -hmm. uh, Nazi jibes now, uh, the other norm, 
they are the norm, and I think it shames the left in this country. You, know, you, you said in earlier there that, that O'Brien rode back on that tweet at the one he doctored. No, he didn't. At the start of his LBC show today, he, he bunkered down on mm. it and he said, um, I didn't cast aspersions at all on Rwanda. I mean, he's been, he's been railing against Rwanda for the last six months. If he thinks it's so good, why is he so opposed to sending people there? But he, you know, and why he, doesn't he go, he go and look himself yeah, well, as well, the Home Secretary well, has he, suggested. Said, he was saying, well, maybe I would, but they don't want to hear opinions like mine. However, what he did do in that interview, which is typical of what they do with, with Suella and with what they did with Pretty Patel, he used the phrase that she was cackling dementedly. He used it 12 or 13 times in, in a piece that was about four minutes long. This was to do her down. This was to insult mm -hmm. her. And, you know, the thing is, the left attack her because she's a strong, successful woman of colour and she's a Tory and they did exactly mm -hmm. the same to Priti yeah. Patel. They are racist in their essence mm -hmm. and, and he's not going to give up on this. And what, you know, the, the, the stuff with him, with him today and, and this other guy, you're right, the Nazism thing has become the norm. You know, you'd have thought they'd have learned from Gary Lineker last week and not done this, but they're doing it again. And it's you just lose the argument when you bring Nazism into it. And it's, you know... <laughs> I looked at that accommodation in Rwanda and, and it's shiny new houses and apartments and about, and she wasn't laughing. And, she, and O'Brien also said, hang on, he said that the, the two people who were standing beside her were watching bemusedly. No, they weren't. They, weren't. they were laughing they were having a wholeheartedly. Joke. They, were they were having a joke. A laugh. I mean, Belinda de Lucy, James O'Brien must now be the most dishonest uh, reporter, if you can call him that, mm. in this country. And actually, he is now spreading hate. Oh, I've, I've never been a fan of his. During the, during the Brexit years, there were only a couple of really mean bullies that wanted to humiliate and embarrass yeah. people yeah. of other political p opinions. He's one of yeah, them. Yeah. There is nothing that, that winds the lib left up more into a frothy lava than ethnic minorities yeah, being proud more. of this country, yeah. being patriotic, mm -hmm. wanting to serve it, wanting to defend this country. This is why they can't bear it when they escape the prison that they want ethnic minorities mm -hmm. to stay in political. And it is racist and what they're revealing is not only are they racist mm. but they insult Jewish people with their horrific comparisons mm. to all their suffering I think they'd almost be included in the soft core um, Holocaust deniers mm -hmm. because when you belittle the suffering mm -hmm. of Jews that comes straight I out agree. of the play can I also just say before we move on from him James I knew him when he was right wing yes he, yeah. he suddenly yeah. became left oh, yeah. wing yeah. when he joined He's the an radio actor. station C yeah. Carol, <laughs> he, he, the, the bloke's an actor you know James O'Brien is one of the greatest actors Actors in Britain, he doesn't believe what he says. He he says it because he saw where LBC was heading and he knew how yeah. he could keep his job. Exactly. Uh, Benjamin Butterworth, Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, says this is all about left wing snobbery, and I think she's right, isn't she? Because actually, what your tribe are doing is doing down this great country of Rwanda. No, it's got nothing to do with the country of Rwanda itself or the sex or the race of the Home Secretary. It's extraordinary to hear all three of you deliver identity po politics monologues to say that it's all about her We've sex seen it. or her race. It's extraordinary how you would attack me if I did well, when that. when did I do that? And yet you will do that to endorse it. Because you when did I do that? Last week when you talked about Suella Braverman and the fact that she's an ethnic minority woman, you, you led into the vote results on the comments on that. Time. You do it all the time. And the truth is that, you know, there's two main questions here. First of all, if we're just going to send everyone here who comes quote-unquote illegally, well, what if that person... What do you mean quote-unquote illegally? Well, they are coming illegally. No, well, no quote-unquote. Actually, 90% of people that have originated in Afghanistan have no, that asylum 40% of them are Albanians. So they're not illegally uh, in those cases. Coming. Well, they're not all illegal at all. But tell well, me, they are. what is the legal route for these people? Well, there, is, there are safe legal rules. Four people coming from Af Afghanistan. Four people tell coming me, from tell Ukraine. Me. Ukraine. What do you mean, you tell you? From there Yemen. are safe legal rules. But, but they the should have. They're already no, 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 set no. up. It's a very simple question. I, I, you said you let... So you said, just said, do you want to open the country up to 100 yeah. million people? You, you, no, that's not the argument you made. You, you, you said, let you say, if you come illegally, you go to Rwanda. There are safe routes. Well, there are. If you're from Afghanistan, if you're from Hong Kong... If you're from in Yemen, what do you do when you get there? Then we help transport those women to an area of safety. They're not coming, Benjamin. What's the legal The women way? from Yemen aren't coming. There's a lot it's, of shouting, but no answers. It's 40% of our... Well, get, you're not listening, love. It's I'm 80 giving you the answer, you're just not mm -hmm. listening. Anyway. OK, listen, listening, listen to Carol's answer. Yeah. 40% of the people coming are Albanians. How many... How many not women the question. From Yemen? OK, do, how, many, how many... Have you seen statistics about women coming from Yemen? 
No, the oh, question is... There's the question. There's a question. Have you seen statistics of but people... But what I'm saying... Because I haven't, because there aren't that is many. That a woman who could have been through an incredible abuse and torture oh. in a country like Yemen yes. arrived on our okay. shores... Will you answer, after you answer my question? Can, get I, can, here. I, no, can I... You answer you my sir, question now. Can I just now, give they Benjamin a figure? Okay, right, let me give, let me it's give you a dangerous place. Let me give you a fact of the figure. Don't all talk over each other. I am going to ask a question. I am going to ask a question of Benjamin. Benjamin. Are you prepared to open out to open up our country, which I think is nearly full, uh, when you look at the housing situation, when you look at the NHS, to a hundred million people around the world who would be eligible? Well, I mean, I assume you failed maths at school because we know full well the hundred million figure is nonsense, and there is not the same thing to say you should have open borders as asking the question as someone who is, let's say, a woman from Yemen or a gay person who has been abused and tortured. Okay, and Carol, what's your little? I know, I know. He's just told you to shut up. A gay person from Rwanda, okay, okay, okay. a homophobic country. Okay. How is that? Benjamin, right? you have to let Carol you, respond. I, I want to ask you a question. How many people do you think who apply for asylum here get granted it? How many people? Uh, I can't remember. You can't remember, you don't know. 74%. And, and yeah. the average in the, in the EU of granting oh, I asylum. You meant thousands, is... forgive me, go on. Okay. You're a soft touch. Well, We're a soft touch. And, and the We're average soft in the EU is 34%. So We're please don't touch. pretend like we're turning women, you are women saying tortured that... women away, because we're not. We are. We're giving those people asylum. The people no, we want to do... You we can't give answer the question that the... someone who comes from one of those countries who might have been tortured is because ben, they're a woman they're gonna they're gonna asylum, gay, ben. you will send them to Rwanda ben. potentially to be tortured again. Okay, get... Final word Final word to Belinda. Final word to Belinda. Every single pound we have to spend on all the fake illegals take away from these women that exactly. we could be exactly. helping. You are anti-asylum. Yeah. You can claim we, to be a voice of okay. women and no, yet listen, you will let them be tortured again. No, why can't they ask the you money? for your That's evidence of how they're going to you be tortured in You want to give it to Rwanda. Albanian men. But, Where's the evidence they're going to be tortured in Rwanda? We know of many examples of gay people. 30 years. Gay years. Gay Wait, that have okay, no, 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 no. I want to move on. I want to move on. And stand by. Can you hear that? Rwanda one of the highest percentages of women. Because Bake Off boffins were in for a treat last night. I really want to get to this. As the great celebrity Bake Off for Stand Up to Cancer returned to our streams with a star-studded lineup. Viewers fell in love with the effortlessly charming Friends actor David Schwimmer, whose cheeky sense of humour came across immediately. I'm only questioning the size of that nozzle. I don't Thank know what you. you're doing with Thank it. Thank you. No one's questioned it before. <laughs> I'm here to have fun, help raise money for a great charity. I lost a grandmother to cancer, my daughter lost a grandmother to cancer, my sister is a cancer survivor. So it's important to me and I'm just grateful that I can help in any small way raise more awareness. I, I have to say though in the end it was a Brit who truly stole the show as the former Little Mix vocalist loved this woman Jessie Nelson left the nation in stitches with her and daring and dare I say it inexperienced approach uh, to baking. Watch. So what do I do with this? Oh, please. How the hell would you separate an egg white? Oh, there's a bit of shell. A little bit of shell didn't hurt no one. But how do I know what it's supposed to look like? Oh. It doesn't look as if you know what you're doing. What no, you... this is just my technique. All oh, right. Just keep on moving it with a little bit of flour underneath the... So flip it. Oh. Well. <laughs> Just keep putting a bit of paste. Oh, no, this is awful that you're even helping me. I was really open for the handshake as well, but it's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> Might as well have some of these while I wait, then, eh? Definitely haven't got the baking bug, but maybe a little packet mix. <laughs> Uh, from Little Mix to Packet Mix, not even Black Magic could have saved those bakes. Thank goodness Jessie had the power, that's another Little Mix pun, mm. to laugh it off and see the funny side, although she just annoyed Carol Malone. I just, you think that's a dairy? I think that's really annoying oh, that she can't separate an egg white from I the couldn't. yolk. I couldn't. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I couldn't, Carol Malone, Benjamin Butterworth, Belinda Lucy. Now, stand by, because coming up, as Sue Gray's cosy relationship with Labour continues to be scrutinised, will Boris Johnson's defence dossier clear his name ahead of the party gate? Witch hunt on Wednesday. Uh, my superstar and we'll thrash that one out very soon. We'll be equally feisty, I'm sure. But next, as the government is accused of unpicking Boris Johnson's Brexit legacy, Reform UK leader Richard Tice live in the studio to explain how he would do things differently. That's straight after the break.
First and foremost, I am a GB News fan and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at seven o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panelists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from seven on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture and sometimes even some ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit on well, you are. You, my, you, you, my, <laughs> my political ambitions are, those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing, go on. He's probably gonna want to lay it down now. I'll give him two minutes to have one. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree, that's what we like on Jubes and Co. Come and join us, GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubry, weekday evenings at six o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akwir, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> on it today! I, 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 Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Welcome back. Now, the DUP confirmed today that its MPs will vote against the Stormont break on Wednesday and a huge blow to the government's recently renegotiated Northern Ireland protocol known as the Windsor Framework. The Conservative Party's European research, research group, the ERG, very influential, they are due to hold a press conference tomorrow. It's expected they will now row behind the DUP's objections. So... This is a big headache uh, for Rishi Sunak and adding to that today the announcement by Reform UK that 11 former Brexit party MEPs, including Anne Widdicombe and Ben Habib, are joining the party. And speaking to GB News this morning, Anne Widdicombe said that it was Reform, not the Tories, who will stand up for the future of the union. I do believe in the union and leaving Northern Ireland in the EU while the rest of us come out was not what was promised. Last time the Brexit party stood down candidates uh, because the Conservatives were promising to get Brexit done. They have ratted on that promise uh, and as far as we're concerned we're not going to be bought off a second time uh, and we will be standing in every single seat. So Richard, look, a big day for your party, a big day for Brexit politics, arguably a very bad day for the Conservative Party. But I want to talk about uh, the Windsor framework first, because this was obviously a very significant announcement from the DUP. We may get another one from the EU. 
RG tomorrow. Now, it won't stop uh, the storm and break passing in Parliament this week because, of course, we know Labour are going to support it. But does this show that real Brexiteers uh, cannot endorse the Windsor framework uh, and does your party reject it? Uh, we completely reject it. Obviously, we've been liaising Why? closely with uh, the DUP because it was quite clear from reading the detailed text and reading what the EU was saying about it that they basically saw there was no change whatsoever. The Stormont break is like a rusty carbuncle that's attached to nothing. It doesn't move, it doesn't work. So you can pull it or push it any Rishi which way you want. This is the best we're ever going to get. So We've heard that. Tears, We've accepted it. No, but, but actually, do you know what? They said that before, and then he said, look what I've got. And we looked at what he's got, and it doesn't work. This break's not attached to anything. It's only in respect of new laws that come down that have to be material and significant. There's then a veto by the UK it's government. It's... In that case, the EU can then apply sanctions to us. It would never work never be applied. It doesn't change okay. anything. So, so the politics of this, and look, Widdy, you know, she's on this show every Thursday night. She's someone I hugely respect. Do you agree with her that if you are a true Brexiteer, so I'm talking about folk here like uh, Boris Johnson, like Michael Gove, you know, true Brexiteers should not that, vote that, for this policy. That in itself, Instagram. frankly, people like Michael Gove are not true Brexiteers. But Boris they, is. Look, ish, he, look, he sold the country down the river on Northern Ireland with the protocol. He sold the country down the river in terms of but the fishing industry. But he would say industry. he needed to but, do it look, and then he was Boris will say what he thinks that day, that hour, works for him. True Brexiteers, and Anne Whittacombe is one of them, along with mm -hmm. Brexit Ben Habib, who's joined us as well, amongst many others. And I'm absolutely... We know that the union is at risk if this carries on under the existing protocol. His changes make no difference at all to the DUP test. They make no difference at all to the fundamental point, Dan, which is that Northern Ireland is subject to foreign laws by a foreign parliament, subject to a foreign court, and it doesn't change okay. any of that. OK, look, I want to talk about your announcement today. Look, I have a lot of respect for these 11 former Brexit Party MEPs, but a lot of folk in political circles are saying, but hang on a moment, you need to encourage some Conservative MPs to join your cause. That's the way that you're going to be able to make a real difference at the next election. Are you disappointed that, yes, you've got your old band back together, that's great, but you haven't actually got anyone new? No, look, I'm, I'm delighted that the band is back together. You can describe, decide which sort of band it is. But, look, this is a band of very experienced, very talented, very wise mm. folk who are going to put their shoulder behind the wheel. We're going to make a massive difference. We stand no everywhere. No-one's defecting from the And, to be honest, the, the reality is almost all of them now have become socialists. High tax, high spend, low growth, and they all seem to sign up to it, thinking that last week's budget was good. It was an absolute catastrophe for this country. That's why we've well, got I a shape and influence. That. Exactly, you see. That's why we're going to make a massive difference to the electoral map. Yeah. And look, at the moment, uh, you know, we're pushing ahead. We're now regularly polling third largest party. Mm -hmm. And I think with this great announcement today, uh, with the help of uh, the likes of Anne Whittacombe, Ben and many others, Rupert Lowe and co, uh, and uh, Belinda Lu De Lucy, etc. We're going to make a big difference. We'll, we'll just keep moving north, keep the momentum. But you know this is uh, what you're not going to like, me saying. All you've done today, Richard Tice, I put it to you, all you've done today is guarantee that we get the Ramona-in-Chief Keir Starmer as our next prime Nonsense, minister. Dan. Look, for two things. Firstly, but you're going to th split the vote. There's no difference, Dan. I keep saying this, but it's not registering with you, so I'll say it again. Mm. We, I keep saying there are two types of socialism, the con-socialist Tories and the red socialist Labour Party. So they're both as bad Hi, as each other? They're both as bad so as each other. So, so you point, genuinely think Keir Starmer as prime minister is as bad as Rishi Sunak? Because I don't. They're both awful. Rishi Sunak is guilty of misleading the British people and, I suspect, misleading the House of Commons. By the way, my point is that Starmer agreement. will be much worse. Uh, I, I think Sunak, they're, they're both awful. Minister. The country's in a terrible state. It needs fundamental reform. That's why we're doing what we're doing. We know we've but got... But don't the right. you need we've to got... reform the electoral system? I mean, look, there's, there's no there's, there's point... Multiple, there's there's multiple... no point you stand in every seat when, under first past the post, you simply cannot win these it's, seats. It's, no, Dan, it's very simple. Why aren't you campaigning, first it's... and foremost, to change the electoral system? Because that's we're, what we're we're campaigning on multiple difference. fronts. But the reality is, you know, you've got to be in the room to be in the deal. If you want to win the lottery, you've got to buy a ticket. I don't. But you so stand everywhere, we shape win? and influence. Who knows? The more people that vote for us, the more we win. But we stand everywhere, we make a massive but difference. Will you win seats? 
Are I, you predicting that you will course, win seats? Of course, I want to win as many seats as possible because I want as many mm. people to vote for us as possible. And we will shape an influence. And t what today does is show that we stand four square with the DUP, mm. for the union, and anything that puts that at risk, frankly, we stand against okay, them. But, but, but I understand what you're saying philosophically. Of course I do. But what do you say to a disgruntled Tory, and there's a lot of disgruntled Tories, we know that, right? Come and join We're reform, all and many no, no, no. of them, in their but, thousands, but, they've no, no, already but, done but so. But what do you say to a disgruntled Tory who is thinking very realistically about the future of the country and thinking very realistically about the danger of a Labour, SNP, Green coalition from hell and says, Richard, if I give my vote to you at the next election, in a, a, in a swing seat, I make it more likely that there is going no. to be that Labour, SNP, Lib Dem coalition. Every, every vote for reform is a vote for change, it's a vote for saving the union, it's a vote for doing Brexit properly and for making Britain great. And, and they are all it completely... A vote for no, they, they are all completely interlinked. The more votes we get, mm. then the more power we will have okay. in terms of being able to shape and influence and to say to people, reform's needed everywhere, including... And the presumably election. you think closer to the election when the... Conserv the existing Conservative MPs start seeing the polling reality. Presumably at that point you think you might get some high-profile defections? Let's wait and see. Are you talking to anyone? Let's wait and see. That's all I'm going to say. OK. Richard Tice, great to have you, the leader of Reform UK. Thank you so much. But coming up in Uncancelled, with donations to comic relief falling yet again, has David Lammy's rage at so-called white saviours had a damaging effect on the charity's fundraising. Former Sun editor Calvin McKenzie weighs in on that very soon. But next in the media buzz, as details continue to emerge about the Sue Gray scandal, will the defence dossier submitted today by Boris Johnson do anything to stop Wednesday's parliamentary witch hunt against him? My superstar panel have their say. Plus, more newspaper front pages are hot off the press. That's straight after this break. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it. Like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no. no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. I campaigned in the largest democratic vote in our island story. I know this country has so much to be proud of. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. The wisdom of the nation is in its people. Vox Populi, Vox Day. That's why I'm joining the People's Channel. Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. 
I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Let's return to tomorrow's news tonight now in our Media Buzz. And as I told you earlier in the show, there's going to be one story dominating the front pages. Tomorrow, the Daily Express also focuses on this new official report slamming the Metropolitan Police, which says the force has lost the trust of the public and could even be disbanded. This is going to be a major story tomorrow. The report is released at midnight. The Sun leads on a story that all motorists will be able to relate to. Britain's gone to pot is the headline as it reports. Half of UK roads are crumbling away to potholes with the majority not being fixed. A repair backlog is at a record high while drivers fork out thousands for repairs and I think that is just totally despicable. Uh, and we're going to return to the media buzz now with tonight's superstar panel, top Daily Express columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper Benjamin Butterworth and the former Brexit party MEP Belinda de Lucy. Now, Boris Johnson has now submitted bombshell evidence that he believes will prove his innocence in the party gate stitch up. Ahead of a grilling by the Commons Privileges Committee on Wednesday, the former PM's so called defence dossier promises to clear him of deliberately misleading Parliament when he claimed no COVID lockdown rules were broken with his birthday gathering in Downing Street. Bojo allies say the dossier will include WhatsApp messages from number 10 aides at the time who briefed him that he acted within the law. Johnson's defence will also claim that the Privileges Committee deciding his fate is unfair because of its political nature, not least by being led by Labour and B. Harriet Harman, who's already said Boris was guilty of contempt. There's also damning new accusations that Partygate investigator Sue Gray, who was meant to be an impartial civil servant, was holding secret talks to join Labour at the time of her original probe. And unbelievably, she was announced as Keir Starmer's new chief of staff earlier this month. Uh, here's what Pretty Patel, the former Home Secretary, big Boris ally, had to say about the farce in my exclusive interview with her on Thursday night. Issues around Keir Starmer, Sue Gray, mm. all these types of things, they're not happening in isolation. Um, my views around what has happened, you know, are pretty well documented now as well. I think actually it's going to put our democracy in a very, very bad light. How can a handful of members of parliament and the committee, you know, really be that objective in light of some of the individual comments that have been made? I think there is a culture of collusion, quite frankly. So despite this culture of collusion, will Boris's bombshell defence be enough to exonerate him in the party gate witch hunt, Carol Malone? I, I wish it would, but I don't think it will. You know, this, this dossier, he's going to produce WhatsApp messages which, which said that what he did and what he said to Parliament, he was told came under workplace exemption rules. And he's going to say that he took advice from senior civil servants and from people in his own team who said what was happening. The meetings they were having were not breaking any rules. Um, but but, I, but and he, and he is also going to question the, the political independence of the committee as well. But, you know, they hate him. Harriet Harman tweeted earlier mm -hmm. this year that it appeared that he had, he had misled the House. Well, if she's already decided and she's the chairman of the committee, how is it going to go his way? What I find really incredible is that he is the only one of the 23 people who have submitted evidence and, and statements that is going to be questioned publicly and it's yeah. going to be filmed. The rest of them have just been able to give their statements. Yeah. They're not being questioned this is a show by trial. this committee. This is a show it's trial. A this is a show court. trial. It is a kangaroo court. Belinda de Lucy, the revelations today in the Daily Mail about Sue Gray are absolutely astonishing. They should be leading every news bulletin in the country, but of course it doesn't fit the agenda of the mainstream media. Sue Gray's evidence should be dismissed. Completely. She's in cahoots with Starmer. <laughs> She's in cahoots with the Labour Party. She always was. This is a disgrace that it's going to be Sue Gray's evidence that the Fixed Privileges Committee uses to try and bring Boris down. This is a disgrace. But it is. I don't think you have to be a fan of Boris to realise something very, very yeah, dodgy. This is about is democracy. On. It is, but I would like to remind you um, that the Tories started this witch hunt 
This was about yeah. infighting mm -hmm. in the Tory party Absolutely. Mm -hmm. first. They set the ball rolling, and not only did they want Boris to lose his job, mm. but this, this, the witch hunters yeah. want him gone well, forever. Course, and by the way, He's I am, I am going to point out, by the way, we still don't know who released that first party gate photo taken from within the Treasury, very close to Rishi Sunak's home. I also played footage last week where Rishi Sunak said very similar things in Parliament about not having attended any of the gatherings. Of course, he also received a fixed penalty notice. So, absolutely, a lot of this is about intratory warfare. I'm not denying that. But, Benjamin Butterworth, even you, as the great Boris hater, must accept now that with the so great evidence being used, this Privileges Committee is an almighty Harriet Harman stitch up. God, you get more desperate. <laughs> to defend lying Boris every single week. No, do you know what? I'm defending believe... democracy. Yeah. Oh, you nonsense. If you believe that Boris Johnson has bombshell evidence defending him, well, I've got a chocolate teapot to sell you. Because I tell you what, if he had that evidence, I'm pretty sure he would have used it when he was fighting to stay as Prime Minister. It's quite obvious that there is no evidence. So do you think the it's right? Stood do up you in think the it's right that a privileges committee now potentially determines whether Boris Johnson, or whether any politician should be able to return to lead their country. Well, do, you do you think it's up to a privileges committee, a fixed privileges committee? Well, do you think it's right that the same rules that were already in place apply to Boris Johnson as every no, other they've changed member? The rules. They've, they've changed the rules. 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 They've And that's why democracy is under threat. Yeah. Yeah. That's why democracy is under threat. Because think about this. If politicians now are too afraid to stand up in the House of Commons to say anything because it might be later used against them by their political enemies in the Privileges Committee to try and stop them being able to be an MP, they're not going to stand up in the House of Commons and tell what they believe their truth at the time to be. So just to, to translate that for the viewers, what you're saying is that if you lie in the House of Commons, it might trip you up later, because that's what he did. Boris Johnson got up at the Commons at the dispatch box as Prime Minister and said, I am so horrified to learn of these wine and cheese parties that might have breached the rules. Oh, what emerged later? Him at wine and cheese parties. Well, no, he, he wasn't. wasn't. He with was bottles, he wasn't, Carol. He was hands never, in the air, waving he was and never leaving the wine to. and cheese party. And also, we're, if, How we're, do you explain if, that? if we're talking about evidence, if this committee had evidence, why did they say not a few weeks ago that if Boris should have known he was broken the rules, which said to me that they don't have any evidence to say that mm. he actually did? And Boris is, will say at this committee that he said in Parliament what he'd been told to say. And also, what does okay. this word reckless mean? Yes. Recklessly mm. misleading yeah. Parliament. What Hell does reckless exactly. Mean? Whatever and, and one group of politicians no. should not pass judgment what on another group mean? of politicians. Recklessly misleading Parliament. Reckless is when you have a car accident. Well, it's reckless because he knew what he was doing no, and he, he was trying to mislead the British public. How but you, you tell me, decided that, if okay. it's the case, as you claim that these text messages which emerge will clear him, do you know what? Try I'm not to going to relitigate the party gate argument well, with you strange, here. Isn't it? But I do think Belinda Delusi has a they very good point down. that much of this is about Tory party infighting. Shame on them. Shame on them. Shame on them all, and shame on them for putting the country through it. Agree. Now, the Queen of US <laughs> chat shows Oprah Winfrey has made another unwelcome intervention into sensitive royal business on behalf of the shameless Sussex sycophants. Not satisfied with helping to start a royal race row that plagued the late Queen's final years, Oprah has now weighed in on Harry and Meghan's potential attendance at the King's coronation. During a CBS interview with her BFF, another faux Meghan supporter when she became famous, Gail King. Watch. You know, it's been reported that Harry and Meghan have received an invitation to the coronation. Do you think they should go? Do you think they should not go? Is it something you'd like to comment on? I'm listening. I think they should do what they feel is best for them and for their family. That's what I think. That's what the bottom line, it comes down to what do you feel like is the right thing for you? OK. Yeah, they haven't asked me. They haven't my asked opinion. Yeah. No, they have not. Now, as I made clear in my column for the Mail Online, Oprah is now a sworn enemy of the British monarchy, openly encouraging the Duke and Duchess on their woke crusade against their own family. And let me make this very clear. Winfrey only wants the Sussexes at the King's Big Day to advance her own involvement in the sordid saga and create maximum drama. So here's my message to you, Oprah. Please do butt out of royal business. The time for that is now.
But coming up, lefty loudmouths James O'Brien and Steve Bray have had a well-earned pasting in the media buzz for their attacks on Superwoman Suella, but could they be in for a spot of bother? In tonight's Greatest Britain and Union Jackass 2, find out as my superstar panel, Carol Malone, Belinda Lucy, and Benjamin Butterworth return very soon. But next in Uncancelled, has David Lammy's white saviour attack on comic relief contributed to yet another drop in donations? Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie, he has a lot to reveal on this and he'll be here straight after the break. First and foremost, I'm a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go, and it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the program sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Uh, it's time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And this is one of these stories. Uh, you won't have seen it anywhere else in the media today, but it's important because the BBC's annual comic relief fundraiser raised £34 million last week. And well, you might say that's an impressive haul. Critics are rightfully highlighting that it actually represents yet another significant drop in donations. So the TV found, uh, fundraiser hit an all-time high in 2011 with nearly £109 million raised, but since then there's been a steady decline, thanks in large part to Labour loudmouth David Lammy. So first writing in 2017, the MP for Tottenham described the Red Nose Days concept as tired and patronising to Africans after Ed Sheeran was filmed helping impoverished kids in Liberia. And his uncharitable woke crusade continued in 2019 when he slammed presenter Stacey Dooley as, Dooley as a white saviour before doubling down on his attack in an interview with Victoria Derbyshire. Evokes for lots and lots of ethnic minorities in Britain a colonial image, mm -hmm. a white, beautiful heroine holding a black child with no agency, no parents in sight, finger in the mouth. Actually, if I had my children posing, I'd never have them with a finger in the mouth. Completely supine. And I'm afraid it perpetuates an image. So it's not that the charity isn't good, but Comet Relief is doing very little to educate. Well, congratulations, Mr Lammy. Uh, thanks to your woke virtue signalling, the once great charity's fundraising figures have plummeted, look at that, by two thirds. Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie joins me now. Calvin, uh, it really does feel like David Lammy's woke intervention has killed off a brilliant charity fundraiser. Well done to him. Right. OK, well, so, so there are two significant aspects to this. First of all, now we don't have white saviours, right? It was a good piece of television. Nobody was thinking that a skint country could go to, i.e., 
the United Kingdom can go overseas anymore and offer any money to anybody. We haven't got any money to offer anybody. You know, it's got nothing to do with that. So it was kind of racism on his part. But secondly, the the issue now is that the films they do make are about skint leads, skint Preston, skint Adelston, skint Southampton. So all that's happened is that we've shown how poor we are. Well, we know how poor we are. Therefore, people don't give any money. So they didn't like it. Why should you feel bad about giving money, which is going to go to a, you know, a decent home for somebody in, in another country? Why are we made to feel bad about it? Who is the racist in this argument? He used the word white. As far as I know, Comic Relief never, ever used the word. Yeah, obviously the images were black because obviously they were raising money for people who are poverty stricken. Nine of the 10 poorest countries on earth are in Africa. So why wouldn't you want to go from a wealthy country and raise some money and send it to a poorer country? What on earth is wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's in Lammy's mind. Lammy's no fool. He's playing the race card in order to shore up, I suspect, the Labour Party in, 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 in some kind of argument that white people vote Tory, but black mm. people should vote Labour. It is completely unacceptable. So what's the and effect? Is com Comic relief is going to die. Now, look, mm -hmm. I agree. It was one of the arguments, right? So I was the first person to write about this. OK, apart from you, Dan, nobody... Nobody has shown the slightest interest. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because you don't because want to in mainstream it. media, mainstream media, their whole point is, for God's sake, don't report anything which is going to cause a problem. Well, it's not the people who have caused the problem. The person who caused the problem was Lammy. I know that they're too terrified to cover this story. Uh, you know why. Uh, but what has happened, Kelvin, as a res direct result of Lammy's attack on Stacey Dooley, because I agree with everything you've said, but the other thing that's happened is that A-list celebrities run a mile now. They don't no. want anything to do with comic relief. So you've got all of these crap D-list celebrities on that show now because the Ed Sheerans of this world say, hang on a moment, I, I'm not going to risk this. I'm not going to risk David Lammy calling me a white saviour and doing me PR damage. So yeah, Lammy has actually caused so much damage to comic relief. And comic relief actually should have hit back rather than giving in like they do. But well, you know what surprises me that they didn't they didn't send James O'Brien out to Africa and Owen Jones to be the best <laughs> bloody place for them. Huh? At, least, at least they get a good welcome out there. They won't get one over here unless, of course, unless you happen to send your kids to the same private school as James O'Brien. And tell and James O'Brien, why don't you respond to that? Every time I make that point, he keeps very bloody quiet. Very anyway, good point. Look, so, anyway, I, I, I don't wish to be unkind <laughs> towards James O'Brien. He's got enough problems of his own. Um, so, <laughs> at the end of the day, why wouldn't even the Daily Mail run it? I, I, it is totally beyond me. It is, it is beyond me. There are so many stories now which actually... So, in the end of the day, mainstream media, with a couple of, couple of exceptions, is literally going to collapse. I mean, mm -hmm. and because they do not represent, they're not even prepared to put one side of the argument against the other and see what happens. So, Lammy, in a funny way, has won. He has won. Yeah. He's destroyed he comic relief. Destroyed comic He's relief. Destroyed He's not going to have any white saviours anymore. No, exactly. You, uh, you, you're not going to see any white saviours. Good work, David Lammy, you fool. Calvin McKenzie, thank you so much. We'll speak again on Thursday. But it's time now to reveal tonight's Greatest Britain and Union Jackass. Carol Malone, who's your GB nominee tonight? My gracious, Britain is swell of bravo, and this woman has taken more flack, more abuse, more personal insults than almost any minister I can remember. She's routinely attacked for trying to stop a problem that, that affects huge swathes of people in this country, mass uncontrolled immigration. And for that, she gets... she. But, boy, she, she dealt with it well, Carol. Look at this. What I suggest they do is get off Twitter, get to Rwanda, and I'll show them how to stop the boats. Good girl. Good she point. offends the assumption those on the left make about, about race and victimhood. Indeed. Benjamin Butterworth, your nominee. Uh, my greatest Britain is Tony Blair. Sorry, I, I said... I said...
I didn't say Union Jackass. Yeah, I said Greatest Britain. <laughs> 20 years ago, <laughs> 20 years he sent war, troops you're in, nominating Tony Blair. He sent troops into Iraq to take down Saddam Hussein, oh one of the most goodness. evil leaders this world has seen, who killed 5,000 oh. people in a horrendous genocide in Kurdistan. Okay. And I think the way history has remembered the Iraq war and Tony Blair is totally unfair. Oh. OK, Belinda de Lucy. Uh, mine has to be the DUP. They are some of the most patriotic Brits you will ever meet. They have publicly opposed the EU's much celebrated Windsor framework win over the UK, and they're very brave for doing yep. so. Go the DUP. Do you know what? I'm going to go with the DUP today. Absolutely standing up. I can't believe Blair didn't win. Real <laughs> Brexit. Uh, <laughs> Union Jack has time now. Carol Malone. Mine is LBC's James O'Brien. He oh, he's getting it tonight. He cropped quotes, doctored a photo of a laughing Suella Bradman in Rwanda. He tra he called her. I heard him today in his radio show. About I think it was about 12, 13 times he called her a cackling demented woman. He said she was cackling dementedly when she was with these two people. She wasn't. She was having a laugh, as were they. Uh, Benjamin Butterworth, your nominee. Mine is the tacky and snobby Karen Brady of The Apprentice fame. The way she treated those contestants into the final two, the women that were vying to get a job or, or to get investment uh, from Lord Sugar, it's disgusting. She She's was a snob. Great. I thought she was great. Let's have a look at her in action. Isn't it your business plan? I mean, it's got so many holes in it, hasn't it? It's a pretty big mistake, isn't it? It is. Because this is hugely disappointing. It's uh, Baroness Brady Baroness. to you. Baroness Brady. My friends call me Karen. Oh, Benjamin, you woke snowflake. This is what I actually want to see on the BBC. For once, actually, someone on the BBC telling stupid young people some home truths. I thought it was uh, absolutely brilliant. She proved she is a Karen. Her for Greatest Britain. Uh, <laughs> Belinda and Lucy, your nominee? Uh, joining Carol Malone's fabulous uh, nominee of boorish lefty bullies, it is Steve Bray for his horrific and highly uh, hurtful um, Auschwitz Well, I can't comparison. choose between them. I have to say, I can't choose between Join Steve Bray or Carol or James O'Brien, so I'm going to have to go with both of you tonight. Yay! Joint Greatest Is that Britain the first time we've had a winner <laughs> to Carol and Belinda de Lucy, who, alongside Benjamin Butterworth, <laughs> have been a fabulous superstar panel tonight. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I'm back again tomorrow night from 9 p.m. Next up, it is the brilliant headliners. Uh, thank you for your company tonight. Good night. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go, and it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even some ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. 
Hello, I'm Michelle Jubri, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Co. Right, you're uh, an inspiration to us all. Clip that bit off. Well, you are. That's you, my you, ringtone. You, no. My political ambitions are <laughs> those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubri, weekday evenings at six o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers. Tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway. Headliners every night from 11 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. And no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Good evening in a moment, headliners. But first, let's bring you the latest news headlines. And our top story this evening on GB News, the DUP says it'll vote against the government in this week's first parliamentary votes on the new Brexit deal. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, agreed the new Windsor framework with the EU last month and it aimed to resolve some of the concerns unionists had about the Northern Ireland Protocol. Also in the news today, the Home Secretary has told MPs she's satisfied the provisions of the government's illegal migration bill are capable of being applied compatibly with the Human Rights Convention. It comes after Suella Bravman said migrants could be sent to Rwanda by the summer. The agreement between the two countries has been expanded to include all illegal migrants, including not just asylum seekers. Speaking in the House of Commons, Braverman told the MPs that the UK would work more with France to secure cross-channel cooperation, and she criticised Labour for announcing its immigration policy on social media. Shadow Home Secretary's been on Twitter. She's very good on Twitter. She tweeted in the last 10 days, Labour's paltry excuse for a plan. Half of it's stuff we're already doing. The other half is their plan for open borders and unlimited migration. What I suggest they do is get off